Today's lab is a forward reverse contactor which controls a motor in both directions. You'll see the control circuit here and the high powered circuit there. You will be using the lab volt. You'll need the disconnect, emergency stop button, two push button controls that we use for your forward and reverse. A contactor that has two contacts on it. One will be for forward, one will be for reverse. You can decide which one is the forward and reverse, right or left. The overall re overload relay that you've used before and we will also add some lights to the circuit to indicate whether it's going forward and reverse. The first part of the lab you should hook up the high voltage side which means the L1 and all the way to the T1 connections. So you will start here with your L1, 2 and 3 and run power from these red, black and blue to your red, black and blue on one contactor and red, black and blue on the other contactor. Now as mentioned in class to reverse the direction of a three-phase motor, you need to reverse two of your phases. So I suggest that you hook up red, black, blue here and take yellow short wires and go red to blue, black to red, and keep the black the same. This will reverse your two phases already so when the contactors come on, it will be done for you. T connections, T1, 2, and 3 can be connected to each other. So T1 to T1, T2 to T2, T3 to T3, and then take three wires and go to your overloads L1, 2, and 3. And then from your overloads T1, 2, and 3, you will come down and hook up your motor in the proper connections of red, black, and blue. first connection is going to make are to reverse my lines at the contactor. You can see that I've hooked up the black to black. I'm now going to take the red and hook it up to the blue line and the blue line hook it up to the red line. This means that when this contactor comes on, red, black, blue will go to the motor. When this contactor comes on, it will be blue, black, red going to the motor. I now run my feed of red, black, blue to my contact, red, black, blue. And since the wires already been connected in the previous part, there's no other wires that have to be connected because bringing power here will bring power to this side of the contactor at the same time. I'm using the yellow cable because they're very short and don't cause a big mess when you're all done. But I plugged in T1, 2, and 3 from one side of the contactor and I'm going to do the same and match up T1, 2, and 3 on the other side. What this does was when this contactor is turned on, power will come out and go to the overload we need to put those wires in still but when this wire comes on power will come out and go to the overload so basically you're making a parallel connection determining which one comes on will send power to our overload we're now going to hook up our contactor to our overload so this is our red wire connected to our red connection going to go to L1 red Take the blue, take the black, sorry, and go to our black. Take the blue and go to our blue. So we've now fed the contactor to the overload. The last step would be the T1s to your motor. All right, we have our red, black, blue plugged in to our overload. Going to take the red wire 
and the other end of it and plug it into our motor red take our black our black wire plug it into black and the same for our blue so now we have red black blue going to our overload our overload is fed from our contactors coming out of the T's and our contactors are fed on the L's from the power supply. So now we've basically completed the high voltage side of the schematic. So there's your red, black, blue, the overloads, the main contacts and the motor. All this has been completed. These are the contactors and the contacts and now we're going to wire up the control part of the circuit. The best way to wire this is to start from your feed of one of the lines and go to your stop button. From your stop button you will go to the reverse button, pick up the other side of the forward button and then pick up both sides of the normally open contacts of that circuit. What you need to notice is that these contacts are forward and reverse and that the forward close contact is in series with the reversing start button and the reversing close contact is in series with the forward start button. So where are all these contacts? Well you have two normally open one and two, the two normally closed, they're located on your contactor. So if you look at this, we see forward and reverse. So this half will be the forward side and that half will be the reverse side. So therefore, your normally open forward contacts are here, normally closed forward contacts are there, and on the other side, you have your normally open for reverse and normally closed for reverse. You also see you have your A1, A2 that controls your for reverse contactor and below is the other A1, A2 that controls this contact. Alright, so if you look at your diagram you get power from the high voltage side you bring it to your stop button. Out of your stop button, you're going to go to your reverse, normally open switch, and also pick up on the same size your forward open side of the switch. And if you follow this cable, you're going to pick up the normally open on the forward and the normally open on the reverse. So what you've done now is you connected this wire and from the stop you've gone to one push button, the other push button and one side of both the maintaining contacts at the reversing contactor unit. The next section we're going to do is we're now going to start here and go forward and go right across and complete it. Okay so from my forward push button from the opposite side of it I'm going to plug into that switch and I'm going to go to the normally open of the forward and complete the maintaining contactor. If you look at your diagram you'll also notice that this point is also connected to the normally close of the reverse. And now from the normally closed we will have to go to the coil. So from the normally closed I go to the forward A1. So notice that the reversing contactor is controlling whether the coil for the forward contactor works. 
from the other side of the coil I will go to the overload contact on the overload. Once you completed the forward section of your diagram you would then repeat the process with the reverse push button which is hooked up in series with the normally closed contact which allows the reversing coil to come on. Now that we've completed all the control diagrams, the only thing that we haven't hooked up are these little pilot lights to indicate when the reversing coil comes on or when the forward coil comes on. This is a good indicator to let us know which way the motor is running. So basically those are these pilot lights on the lap volt and all you have to do is take one wire from each side and go across the coil that you want it to light up on. So in other words if you want the reverse coil to light up the green light all you do is take a wire from A1 to one side of your light and a wire from A2 to the other side of the light. When the coil gets energized, so will the light. The same is repeated for the red light, just that you will use the A1, A2 on the other contactor. Since the lights have a common point here and here, you can put a jumper on the light like this and then just go to one of the A2s. As long as one of the coil comes on, it allows current to flow. But here and here, they must come from separate A1s, one from forward and one from reverse. So as you can see, I've jumpered out one side of the lamps. I've taken this wire and connected it to the A2. And we know that A2 on this one is also A2 on that one. The A1 from the reversing contactor is going to the green light and the A1 from the forward contactor is going to the red light. We are now ready to see if the motor runs and is able to reverse direction by pushing the green button for reverse and the red button for forward. The e stop acts as a stop button. All right, we're ready to proceed. The motor is not turning. We turn the stop button to basically make sure it's open. And I will press the reverse button. And the motor, as you can see, is running. If I press the stop button, you will see that it's turning clockwise right now. So I'll press the green button again to get it going. You'll also notice that our light is on indicating that it's going in what we call reverse. If you stop that and look at your contactors you'll see these little points here and one of these will be sucked in to indicate which contactor is energized. So we turn that on and we look at that you will notice that this contactor went in and is farther in, therefore it is energized. It has been sucked in and allowed current to flow from the top to the bottom and having the motor run. If we press the stop button, the motor stops, the contactors are reversed. We release the stop button and press forward. You'll notice that now the red light is on and the motor is running in the opposite direction counterclockwise before it was clockwise. Okay, start it up again. You'll notice that this contactor has been sucked in. That means this is running and that is not. It is designed that if I was running in, in this direction, pressing the green button to go reverse will not do anything because you have interlocked it and, and stopped the current flow from this stop button to energize the coil because this are now normally open. This is what you call an electrical interlock.
So that's your lab. Looks pretty crazy and messy, but I'm sure you can get it to work. Good luck. Another feature I wanted to point out regarding the Ford reversing contactor that you can purchase from your contractor is, although you have to wire it up with an electrical interlock to avoid having both contacts come on at the same time, when this unit is sold to you, it also comes with a mechanical interlock already built into the system. What this means is, is that if you were to press the interlock and engage it, you cannot physically press the other one at the same time because there is an interlock built into the unit that doesn't allow one to be on at the same time as the other. But of course, Cole requires us to have a mechanical and electrolock interlock in place. To show you a better example of this, we will look at the other unit that you're familiar with, which is the larger electromagnetic contactor. And if you take this and you flip it around, you will notice the unit has a interlock, which means that when this is energized, the coil pushes this forward and allows that one not to be energized. So if I let go of this, it pulls back and therefore it can go up. But if you notice, if this one's up, I cannot lift the other side up at the same time. So this is what we call a mechanical interlock for a forward reverse contactor. So when you purchase one from a contractor, or sorry, from a supplier, it usually comes with the wires already interconnected in between them. And all you have to run is your line one, two, and three. And if you notice this one here, line one goes to line three, line two goes to the line two, and line three goes to line one. So you've already made the switches on here. So all you have to do is come in with line one, two, and three here, or line one, two, and three here. In between, they hook up line one to one, two to two, and three to three. And of course, you would hook up your motors, T1, two, and three, right there.